Welcome again to our second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. One of the cardinal truths of the Christian church, the hope of the Christian in these days of darkness is covering the earth. And uh, I want to continue with this theme that the disciples developed on the Mount of Olives when they were with the Lord and they said to him privately, what are the signs of thy coming? And the Lord has enunciated several of them already. He first of all said that would be a falling away, great darkness, iniquity would abound, the love of many would grow cold. He then says, but at the same time there would be great revival, the uh, gospel preached to gospel preached to every nation. And then he goes on to say, and when you see the abomination of desolation, and we saw what the abomination of desolation was, it was the image of the Antichrist set up in the holy place, set up in the temple that must be rebuilt for this prophecy to be fulfilled. Now then, continuing in Matthew 24, what is the next sign that shall come before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? And uh, the Lord says, well, when you see the abomination of desolation, get out of Judea. Get out. Because then he says, you know, in verse 21, For then shall be great tribulation, such as there was not from the beginning of the world, nor ever shall be. Now, another truth that I want to look at very carefully is this. The Lord is making it clear that his coming is not yet. He said, look, these things have to come to pass. Great darkness, great revival. And then there will come the image of the Antichrist in the temple. After which there comes great tribulation. And one of the points that I want to make and to my way of thinking is very important indeed is the fact that the church will pass through the great tribulation and because of that the key to leadership is to teach people to be a teacher of righteousness to teach people that they be strong and that they will not indeed turn aside into wickedness or give up during this time you see we have just had you know prior to this course a situation that occurred in Iran and it was that they captured some British sailors and those British sailors you know did not obey the code of honor of the armed services and almost were agreeing with their captors. Now, many will be persuaded to give up their faith in Christ during this time. And so, I want to warn leadership that our duty is to strengthen people, to strengthen the church, that they might go through the great tribulation. And you say, well, what is the proof that the church will go through the great tribulation? Well, part of the truth is listed by the Lord himself. When he says in Matthew 24 and verse 22, for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. They shall be shortened. Well now, 
my uh, point is this that if the elect are in heaven why should those days be shortened because of them see my wife is in heaven well the great tribulation is not going to affect her who is it going to affect then it is those on earth for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened so therefore the elect must be on earth they must be on earth let us think of the warning of the apostle Paul in Acts chapter 14 and verse 22 he said through much tribulation must we enter into the kingdom of God therefore may I say this that you have a number of scriptures that make it very clear that the elect shall be upon earth let us consider some of them you know we've already read in previous studies on Revelation chapter 13 and there it speaks of the Antichrist making war with the saints well dear ones in order for him to make war with the saints the saints are not in heaven he can't make war with those in heaven he's on earth and so he's making war with the saints well the saints must be on earth when the Antichrist is here and so the Antichrist will make war with the saints and the saints will be on earth when the Antichrist is here and the Lord saying well for the elect's sake the great tribulation shall be shortened well again it's clear that the saints and the elect must be on earth for him to be able to make a statement like that and then also you know the admonition of the apostle Paul through much tribulation must we enter the kingdom of God you know the saints are not going to be raptured before this so I want to consider these things and I want to look at another scripture in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 14 it speaks of those who come out of great tribulation now in order to come out you must be in you must be in you cannot come out of something that you are not in and so these saints you see very clearly were indeed in the great tribulation and during that great tribulation they lost their lives to the Antichrist now let us consider something else you see when this image is indeed erected in the holy place all those who will not bow down to it shall be beheaded and then you see there are other thoughts the mark of the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 14 and verses 9 to 11 there is the thought very clearly of those who will not accept the mark of the beast well who is not going to accept the mark of the beast it is the saints and so again you see the saints are going to go through the great tribulation and the thought here and it's very clear indeed that um, we have to overcome during the great tribulation and in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11 it speaks of those who overcame the Antichrist by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony the word of their testimony in other words we shan't give in as those British sailors did 
and fraternize with their captors. But we are going to keep the code, not of the military, but the code of Christ. And we will not bow down to the image of the Antichrist. And we will not accept the mark of the beast. And we will not love our lives unto death. In other words, we will be willing to give up our lives for the sake of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, we could continue, you see, and give other examples of the fact, you know, in Revelation chapter 16 and verse 15, and here we are deep into the great tribulation, if I can say this, uh, blessed is he that keepeth his garments, keepeth his garments. So there's going to be tremendous pressure to give up and forsake those garments of salvation. Now, having said this, you know, as a leader, we have the responsibility of telling the people the truth. All these scriptures are very clear and they are not needful of deep interpretation but simply to be read as they are written. And we see the great tribulation shall be shortened for the elect's sake. You know, blessed are those that come out of tribulation. The Apostle Paul says that through much tribulation we must enter the kingdom of God. We are not going to be spared. And the fact that the saints obviously are going to fight against the Antichrist, which means the saints are indeed on earth when the Antichrist is here. So with these scriptures in mind and others, we can see that it is very important that we prepare the saints for the last days. And that is the burden that I have, actually, to tell the saints the truth. Look, you're going to enter days of darkness. You can see the darkness around us. The falling away of all moral values, the compromise in governments around the world, but also a great revival coming. And we have got to understand this that the Antichrist is interested not in the wicked because they are already with him but he is desirous of indeed persuading the saints to give up and come into his camp now then we have got to prepare the saints. We've got to strengthen the saints. And I come back to what I said in the previous sessions, that Joshua, the new leader who took, after, uh, took over from Moses and brought the children of Israel across Jordan into the Promised Land and fought many battles on their behalf, God spoke to him in no uncertain terms and kept repeating this. Be strong and of a good courage. And how were we to be strong and of a good courage? Well, it is to be like Joshua, to meditate day and night in the word of God. We cannot just be satisfied with the milk of God's word. But we've got to give people the meat of God's word. That is so important. So I'd like to look with you now into 1 John chapter 2 and verses 12 to 14. And here the apostle 
divides the Christians into three sections. He speaks of little children who know that they are saved. And then he speaks of the young men who are strong and who have overcome the wicked one. And uh, what does he go on to say? He said, the word of God abideth in you. That's the difference between a babe in Christ who just knows the elementary doctrines of God's word as they are enunciated in Hebrews chapter 6 and verses 1 to 3. You know, faith, well, the babe in Christ has faith. Repentance from dead works. And then the laying on of hands and the baptisms, you know, water baptism, baptism of the Holy Ghost. They have these. That is the milk of the word. But Paul, you know, speaks of the fact that there is the meat of the word. And that meat of the word is given to those who have discernment, whereby their senses have been exercised to discern both good and evil. And this is what we as leaders must do. We must raise our congregation from babyhood, if I could say this, to youth. After all, you know, in secular life, you know, who joins the army? We're not little children. No, it's young men. Why? Because young men are strong. And that is what we have indeed to develop in the lives of our congregation. Spiritually speaking, we must have those that are strong, who have overcome the wicked one. And why? How? It is because the word of God abideth in them. The word of God abideth in them. The word of God, you know, has taken root in their heart. It's brought up the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith or steadfastness, meekness and self-control. In other words, that fruit, you know, has made them strong. And so, I want to continue with this fact that, indeed, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ does not take place until after the Great Tribulation. And, as I said, we've got to see that our people do not apostatize during that time. The Great Tribulation has a beginning, it has an ending. And then uh, we are told by the Lord himself in Matthew 24 that after the Great Tribulation, see, in verse 29, immediately after that tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give a light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. All right, that's after the great tribulation. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in the clouds with great glory. So, when does the Lord come? He comes after the great tribulation and after the sun is darkened, after the moon will not give her light, after the stars in heaven fall. And then, you see very clearly we have the thought that 
then he will come. He will come then. And uh, that that is clear. And he shall send, you see, in verse 31, the angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. And so, there we have the chronological order that must take place before the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'd like to briefly recapitulate before I go on and just say this. You know, we have to understand the signs of the times and the things that shall come to pass And we have to warn our people. The Lord will not come at any time. But there is a sequence of events, a chronological order of events that must first take place. Darkness shall cover the earth. Well, we're seeing that starting already. Then great revival, where nations shall make a choice between Christ or the Antichrist. Nations shall make a choice. They will either be the sheep nations on his right side or the goat nations on his left. And then, you see, as this great revival reaches its climax, then the Antichrist shall come. Well, what are the signs that must take place before he comes? Well, it's clear from Nebuchadnezzar's image. You know, first was Babylon, then Persia, then Greece, then Rome, and then from out of the confines of the old Roman Empire, there must come ten kings. Ten kings. And these ten kings will reign... And then there comes an eleventh who is the Antichrist. So there we're given the chronological order of when he will come. And then after him comes the false prophet. And the Antichrist, you know, he was, he is not, and he shall ascend from the pit. And he is a Greek reigned over Persia and who spoke from Babylon an undefeated general who will make war with the saints and then there will be that image the abomination that maketh desolation it will stand in the temple and so that temple has to be rebuilt and then when that image is placed in the holy place of that temple by the false prophet to the Antichrist. And all people are commanded to bow down and worship that image. Well, those that don't shall indeed be beheaded. And those that don't take the mark of subservience to the Antichrist, they shall lose their lives. But all those that take it shall be in the pit of hell, tormented forever and ever, having no rest day or night. And that is followed by the great tribulation. And then in the great tribulation, there will be the saints, the, the, those that were martyred in the great tribulation. And if they were martyred in the Great Tribulation, they had to be in the Great Tribulation. They come out of the Great Tribulation. And so we must indeed heed the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, that for the elect's sake, the Great Tribulation shall be shortened. Therefore, the elect are on earth. And we have to train our people. You see that they are strong. They are strong. The word of God abideth in them. And they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, then after the great tribulation, there comes the fact that the Son 
shall be dark and the moon shall not give its light. The stars of heaven shall fall. And then, and then only, you see, there is a sign of the coming of the Lord in the clouds, in the clouds. And at that moment, he will send forth his angels with the sound of a great trumpet. This is the last trumpet of, of whom the Apostle Paul speaks. The great trumpet, the last trumpet. And then the angel of God will be sent forth to gather the elect and to be with the Lord in the clouds and to be forever with him to go to heaven. And so we have to enunciate very clearly as leaders these sequence of events so that people do not think the Lord is coming at any time. But they realize that the church has to pass through the great tribulation and has to withstand the blandishments of the Antichrist so that we turn not to the right nor to the left and we never but never give up. And by the grace of God, you know, we are strong because like young men, the word of God abideth in us and we overcome the wicked one. So may God grant that we understand these events that lead up to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And above all, we encourage our people to be strong by meditating day and night in the word of God. May God bless you and cause you to be strong and of a good courage. Amen.